What's up, everybody? This episode of the podcast is brought to you by We Print Wraps. We Print Wraps is the wrap industry's number one source for wholesale printed wraps. They offer free nationwide shipping all across the U.S. and Canada. Go to WePrintWraps.com today. Okay, folks, welcome to the All Wrapped Up Podcast. If you're new to the show, I've been a weekly listener. Thank you for tuning in and supporting the show. As you know, I don't ask for much, but I appreciate it if you left your feedback and a five-star rating on any platform that you're listening to. It really helps us out in getting the word out about the industry. And don't forget, if you find value in the content, subscribe and tell a friend. And now here's a brand new episode of All Wrapped Up with Erica Gear from The Rap Kitty. What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to All Wrapped Up Podcast. We'll be interviewing industry-leading rap companies to share tips, tricks, stories, and more. What's going on? <laughs> That's good. How are you? I'm doing well. Doing well. Uh, I know we talked a little bit off air here. You're a little nervous, but that's okay. We'll get through these jitters. Right? Sorry. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good. Come on. We're hyped up. We're going to be talking about the fucking rap industry. Yes. Yeah. Oh, you sound so excited. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Yes. Yes. Um, that's such a big industry and it's still so new to me and there's just so much to talk about and even just how I came to find myself here. Um, some days I still can't believe where I am now. So. Um, Absolutely. That's the meat and potatoes I want to get into. But before we get into that, before we get into that, I like to just ask, you know, what you got going on for the week at your, uh, at your shop. And we'll talk about your kind of situation of the place at work that you, you're at and stuff like that. But what do you have for your personal work? What do you have going on this week? Uh, so this week we have a couple of fleet cars. Um, uh, they added some new vehicles in. So they're just simple half wraps real easy um i have to redo half of an ice cream truck because they messed up the print was out of my control but um so it should be fast and easy too because i've already did it nice yeah do you do a lot of commercial stuff over like the custom like restyling part uh right now i'm doing more commercial work Mm -hmm. for another shop um, I'm trying to get more custom work for myself under my own name and I'm getting work like here and there, mostly getting a lot more questions and qu- like asking for quotes. Um, <clears throat> just trying to build my name and get myself out there, put myself out there right now. So yeah is your is your passion more in the restyling or is it in the commercial game definitely more in the restyling um i've always been super creative um i love you know when somebody has their own style and they can express it through any means in their life and you know vehicles happen to be a very big way that people like to express themselves through and it's something that i've found very interesting and very satisfying and I like seeing what other people have. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Now, now you just made a big move from Minnesota to Arizona. Can, yes, can, I did. Can you share a little bit on, on what the, the extreme change from one side to the other side was? Um, well, I guess things just like kind of didn't end up working out for me in Minnesota. I was working for another shop that ended. Uh, I had gotten out of a relationship. Uh, I had no lease. So, and I had no, you know, boyfriend. So I was not really bound down at all. And I just really felt like I needed a big change in my life. And, um, I was able to line up a job with another shop in Arizona. And made the move for it. And, um, you know, I don't have any friends or family. I literally knew nobody out here. And I just did it for myself. You know, I was just at that time in my life where I was like, wow, this is, might actually be feasible. And I could 
do this because I've always kind of wanted to move out of state and I never really had a real vision of where or when or actually doing it. And then it kind of came up like all of a sudden, like there's this opportunity, you know, like now or never kind of thing. Right, so right. I jumped to it. Uh, I moved out here in May, right, right in time for summer. Nice. So, <laughs> uh, that was like, experiencing hell on earth <laughs> what, <laughs> what, i mean what what was so hot what was it just like the 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 change in, in climate the weather yeah, just everything the dry heat yeah like, yeah like minnesota it gets hot and it gets like hot and humid and sticky but like it's a different once you get over like three digits <laughs> in temperature it's like a whole nother thing yeah um, but, you know, I'm really enjoying it right now because I'm, you know, outside in December in a t-shirt, so. <laughs> yeah, I can't complain about that. Right, yeah, I've always been a cold baby, so I'm really enjoying it right now. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, did you grow up in Minnesota? Yeah, um, I was actually born in San Diego, uh, but I'm, my parents moved when I was about six months old, so Minnesota is my, has been my entire life. Hometown. Um, yeah, so that's uh, I've also always been kind of my excuse to why I hate the cold is because I was born in California. So. Yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> yeah, so that's cool. So, so what yeah. was the hardest part about moving? Just kind of picking up your stuff. Did you did you fly and just like, or did you like trailer everything up? And nope, just... I got a trailer for my little Hello Kitty car, and I like packed everything up and left. Um, I guess the hardest part for me was personally, I, I kind of have a hard time letting things go. Mm. Um, kind of, not we quite quarterish, <laughs> but you know, um, on the borderline. So I just had a lot of things and stuff that I've collected over the years. And, um, so it really took a big part of me to sell all off as much as I could and just figure out like what I needed. Um, well, the other hard part too is I, I feel like I have so many like hobbies and interests and different crafts that I like to get into and I have so much stuff for each different type of thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I can't obviously take it all with me, but I still want to bring stuff so I can work on my stuff out here. But, um, so it's just figuring out what I needed. I think I maxed out the towing capacity of my car. <laughs> I towed one ton. One ton? Or, yeah. On that, uh, what is it, a Scion? A Scion XD. What? Yeah. Come on. Uh, it was like 1,600 miles. Oh, my God. Uh, yeah, it was a lot. And uh, you know, I have my dog and my cat with me, too. And they, they, they were troopers, man. They really stuck it out for me. Both of them were just like <laughs> sitting on my lap about 80% of the time. Wow. Both of them just snuggled up. They were the, they're just the cutest. That's they're the so, best. That's so fun. How long's the, how long's the drive from there to Arizona where you're at now? Uh, if you can drive nonstop, it's 24 hours. Okay. But with all the stops and everything, it was about 30 hours. Jesus. When I moved. So I like stopped, took a nap for a few hours in my car and just kept on going. Wow. And, and that must have been hard kind of just going to a foreign place, no friends, starting over, doing it all by yourself, figuring it yeah. all out. Yeah. But hey, you only um, live once, right? Right. Exactly. Like I said, I felt like it was the right time in my life to do this for myself and I did it. And like I said, even to this day, I still look around and I can't believe I'm out here and I did it. And like, not necessarily like I made it yet, but you know, like I, I'm actually like doing all right for myself. Definitely. You made a couple <laughs> friends on there, probably in the industry too, right? Yep. Yep. I met my boyfriend now too. He's amazing. Nice. Um, uh, everybody that I work with at the shop now, uh, they're amazing. They're really nice. And yeah. And then I joined, joined a car club too. Uh, they're like my new family and, um, 
is it is it um like scion related because i know those scion groups are usually they, <laughs> they kind of stick together <laughs> right yeah no it's not just a science specific group we have like three other scions in our group though mm-hmm. so um we're more open to all make some models and you don't have to have a ton of mods on your car like you know uh, it's more about the people and you know being active in the car community and just having a good time uh, Nice. I feel like I've met a really great group of people. Um, AZ Vision CC, if you want to hit us up on Instagram. <laughs> nice little shout out. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Now let's, let's talk a little bit about the shop you're working at now. How did you end up connecting, um, with this shop? Did you kind of like Google them or did you like, were they looking for somebody from like Craigslist or something? Uh, well. I was previously working for another shop out here and I ended up doing some side jobs with them through a a girl that works that I worked with. So um when things didn't work out, uh I hit them up and they had work and they've kept me busy ever since and you know, things have been actually working out really well here. So Nice. And they and you had you had mentioned off here a little bit, they do a little bit of everything from sign printing and, and cars and, and all they kind of, they kind of like full full on sign shop with vehicles yeah so um it's actually kind of interesting how they have their shop set up it's one building but there's actually like three or four different companies that operate from under the building okay and they you know they have jobs from either companies and uh, they share equipment and um so technically i I do wraps for two of the companies because they both sell wraps. Mm-hmm. So um, it's kind of interesting to see how it all works. And they're just like one big happy family. And, you know, they've got a good operation going and uh, things are going really well there. So Nice. Now, are you kind of like the lead installer or is there other installers involved? Uh, yeah, I guess I'm the main uh, contractor installer. There uh, is another guy. He does like mostly banners and signs, but then he, he knows how to do some of the wraps too. Uh, and then one of the other guys knows how to wraps too, but he mostly does the sales and designs now. So you got, you kind of left alone in your own little kingdom in the garage and yeah, kind of do your <laughs> own thing. Part. Yeah. If, I mean, I found that I like working by myself. Um, but you know, since it's still like a sign shop, and there's other people that work there, They're, you know, they'll come by and see what I'm working on or, uh, you know, small talk for a little bit. So it's not like I'm alone, mm. but I work alone. So if that makes sense. Do you, do you put on like headphones and kind of zone out when you're rapping or got different music in the background or? Uh, sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I'll go without. Sometimes I have my little speaker. Um. I'm actually waiting because I ordered headphones. So I haven't had headphones yet. <laughs> yeah, we had a little dilemma, a little dilemma yeah. earlier with headphones, but that that's all good. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I found that I actually like working more with when music's in the background because when I have the headphones in, like I can't hear anybody or, you know, I feel like you take away one of my senses and I'm like totally shut off to the world. So I like to be aware of what's going on around me. Even if, you know, it's not relevant to me, like, yeah, not like, not like I'm eavesdropping on people, but like, (laughs) just like one, 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 the headphone on, one headphone off, just in case. (laughs) Yeah. Somebody wants to say something, you, you want to catch them in the act. (laughs) Yeah. I'll have my headphones in anyway, and then people don't realize it, and then they just start talking to me, and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's not over. (laughs) Yeah. So that's so funny. What do what do you typically jam out to when you're kind of rapping or getting in the zone? Yeah, I guess I like like house and um, techno. Nice. (laughs) Some like R and B, hip hop stuff. Nothing specific. I guess I haven't really expanded my musical selection lately so (laughs) are you telling me you don't have a rap like uh a rap folder saved with a bunch of songs in it 
Like, no. like of all of most of us freaks have like a rap yeah. playlist. I guess I've been slacking in the <laughs> playlist department. But. Oh shit. Yeah, oh. we've got our like morning playlist, afternoon playlist, and then late yeah. night kind of you know, usually the trance and kind of techno is like that late night kind of uh right. music uh selection. Just because I, I think it's just the time for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> That's too funny. But you know, Going, going, going back, I, let's talk a, a little bit about your, your backstory on kind of how you kind of got into the industry and how, where your passion sparked from. Mm, okay. I guess it's kind of a loaded question because I'm not sure where to start. Oh, um, t- take me all the way back. If it goes back <laughs> that far, that's all right. Well, I'm just trying to decide where to start. So. Like, as a kid, I've always been really creative and really artsy-fartsy, you know, and getting my hands onto things, and, um, like, so, and, like, my grandma taught me how to sew, and, you know, we do Christmas crafts every year, and, um, in high school, I had made my own dresses for Sadie Hawkins and prom, and for Sadie Hawkins, I made them out of duct tape. What? <laughs> I had two duct tape dresses. Um, That's insane. I, how long did it take you to make that? Oh, I don't know. A couple of days. And how many rolls did it take? <laughs> um, I kind of cheated because I duct taped fabric and then I cut the fabric out and sewed them together. So, so you, it wasn't full on duct tape. All right. All right. So you kind of made a but, template out of a dress. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Smart though. So, yeah, I still have those. That was fun. I had, so I guess this is kind of how I first got into car mods without even realizing what I, what it meant. Mm-hmm. Uh, my very first car I had got into an accident and the bumper fell off and, uh, I couldn't drive around without a bumper. So instead of having to go and buy a bumper from the junkyard for this piece of junk vehicle, I, took the old one and duct tape it back onto the car (laughs) and me being the creative little kid that I was like, I was like, okay, well I'm not going to just have ugly silver duct tape on my car. So I had pink and orange like stripes and zigzags all over my bumper. (sighs) So I made it like funky. And then that kind of escalated to, uh, duct taping half my car in rainbow duct tape (laughs) and I had a big Hello Kitty face on the hood made of duct tape that was just like wow I I I really wish I had pictures of my first car because like thinking back on it now it's like kind of where it started without even realizing that's where it started at the time do you remember what kind of car Um, it was it was a 91 Mercury Topaz. Topaz. Whoa. <laughs> I remember <laughs> <Yeah>. those. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I had fun with that. That's cool. Um, so, so that kind of, you know, just from a bumper falling off and you using going back to duct tape kind of sparked a little bit of creativity on. Yeah. Um, that's different. So- that's different. I haven't had that on the show yet. <laughs> Taking out the duct right. tape. That's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta start somewhere. Shit. You know? Right? Yeah. Oh man. Um, trying to think where it went from there. So being creative and all that, um, most people would have thought I went, would have went to school for art. Um, yeah. but I actually went to school for accounting. Really? Yeah, and I don't know, I tried to be logical about it and say, you know, I'll get a good job or I'll be able to run my own business. And, you know, I did have a good job for a while and just wasn't for me, you know. In accounting? In the industry? Yep. Yep, I actually worked in city government. Really? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. So you went to college, got a degree? Yep, I have my associates in accounting. Nice. Sitting behind a desk didn't, uh, didn't, wasn't your thing? Uh, no, I mean, yes and no. I enjoyed it because it was, 
I was working for a community. I felt like I was actually, you know, serving my community and it was, it was good, honest work Mm -hmm. and working with the, the public and, um, made good money. You know, I had good benefits. Um, and then actually, um, about two and a half years ago, almost three years now, um, I had a mildly severe concussion, um, Long story short, a brick fell on my face while I was sleeping. What? (laughs) Yeah. Hold on. (laughs) Was this like a brick fell on your face while you were sleeping? Was it like, were you like in like a building that just was kind of open? No, I had a shelf over my bed. Okay. And I didn't, didn't realize that the stuff I put on the shelf was heavy and one of the items was a brick. Oh my and god. If, and this yeah. was over your bed, over your bed. Yeah. So on the wall. Oh my god. I learned that the hard way. Don't put anything over your bed. <laughs> wow. Um, that gave you the concussion. So, so not that I'm just trying to piece everything together. It's so, yeah. so that fall from how high was it? Um, it was probably like five or six feet. So from that high, the brick comes off the shelf, whatever it breaks, lands on you, and it gave right. you and it gave you a concussion? Um, not instantly. I had like a nice uh splitting uh, like a nice chunk on my forehead, a like, nice gash. Wow. And uh I drove myself to the emergency room uh and this was like three in the morning. I took the next day off, tried to go in the day after and made it about half a day because I had such a terrible headache, couldn't focus. Um, the third morning I woke up and it was like I had the drunken spins. Mm-hmm. Everything in the room was spinning, but I was just laying there. And that was like when I really realized like this is the concussion. This is not normal. This, you know, I need to go to the emergency room. Um, thankfully there was no internal bleeding, but. It was still a pretty good concussion and, um, I went to vestibular therapy, which your vestibular system is your brain's gyroscope. Okay. So that's what interprets, uh, like depth perception, motion, movement, um, you know, uh, like your ocular motor senses. So it was pretty much like you had pushed the reset button on my brain. Because I would get dizzy if I sat up too fast or if I turned my head too fast. Um, you know, it just really was a big step back for me in that time. Wow. Um, it was kind of like, um, being seasick or what do they call that? Yeah. Um, vertigo. Vertigo. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. Oh man, that must have been miserable. Yeah, and at the time, I I was working at the government job, and then I was also working part-time at a restaurant. And, you know, restaurants, you're running around like crazy, and it's a busy environment. And, like, my brain literally could not handle just being there because it was so overwhelming. Um, And then uh, after the concussion, I had gotten anxiety and worsening depression. And um, it was just, like, a really not good time for me in my life. So I ended up having to quit my part-time job. And then eventually I lost my full-time job because of it. Um, and I was unemployed for a while. Wow. And, um, you know, how how long of a gap? How no, it's fine. No, it's fine. How long of a gap from when, you know, it, it had happened to when, you know, this kind of changed your life, you know, financially. Um, well, let's see, it, it happened in April and then I lost my job that December. So my, the government job, they were being pretty understanding as far as work and uh, medical leave and, you know, I had exhausted all of my medical leave and it had, you know, disrupted my sleep schedule and, mm-hmm. um, 
it was just really hard to focus and I c- couldn't multitask anymore. It was really hard to hold two thoughts at once. Um, so it's hard to describe. So like when somebody says they've had a concussion, um, uh, you know, there's such a big spectrum of how bad this concussion was, but right. to like restart your brain, um, it was a huge step. Yeah. Yeah. And trying to figure everything all out. Like you're basically starting from scratch, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I had done the therapy and it, they had helped a lot. And um, another thing that helped me too during that time is I started to skateboard mm-hmm. I, again. Like I skateboarded a little bit in high school and then I picked it up again. Um, and and just slowly working myself into that because, you know, when you're moving and things are moving past you, like that's all working that vestibular system. So right. it's like helping to build that back up. Yeah. So your yeah, balance, you know, your, your motor skills yeah. and, you know, keeping one foot on the skateboard, the other foot pushing. There's a lot of, yeah. there's a lot of just movement going on there that stimulates a lot of things in the mind to get those things back and running. Yeah. So it was just like trying to work those muscles in a way that I enjoyed it. And also getting exercise, which made me feel better. Yeah. And, um, but like after I became unemployed is when I started to, uh, uh, dabble more in wraps. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think, See, I don't recall the timeline exactly ever since this had happened, but, um, like maybe three or four years ago, I had bought some purple carbon fiber and I messed around with it a little bit, not really understanding what it was. And then when I, uh, became unemployed, I found the, the vinyl again. And I was like, Oh, I should order more of that and try again. And so I did and I just started wrapping the interior pieces of my car and um, just kept going with it. And then uh, my roommate at the time was like, you know, people like pay money for wraps, right? And I'm like, really? (laughs) 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 So like, you know, and that was also right around the time I got introduced more into the car scene. So I was like, yeah, you're right. Like, you know, if I can keep doing this and getting better at it and, you know, work on friends' cars that'll let me, well, maybe it'll come with something. Right. <laughs> right. Um, especially since I was unemployed. So I was a bit optimistic. Um, yeah. A little side cash never hurt nobody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I, I just, like I said, I just started working on my car and did my interior pieces not realizing at the time that I probably have one of the hardest interior pieces to wrap. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of pieces and a lot of intricate like sections in those scions. Mm-hmm. <laughs> is that a really you, curvy? Yeah. Is yeah. that what you had back then? Still? Yeah. I still have that same car. Yeah. Um, and they last forever too. I mean, Toyota, yep. <laughs> Toyota makes a good car. So. Now I'm six years strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then um, I went to a car show and there happened to be a rap shop and set up a booth there. And I'm just like, hey, any chance you guys are hiring? Well, yeah, maybe. Send me some of your work. And, you know, sent an email, with some pictures of stuff that I did and hired me a week later. And I was like, whoa. Nice. <laughs> so that was like the whole new world of raps that I really had no exposure to yet. And um since I had a little bit of experience coming into it, like once uh somebody finally taught me more of the techniques and how things go, like it really started to fall in place for me. And, you know, after like three to six months, like, I was working on some really nice cars already. Like, what type of cars were you working on then? Uh, I'm trying to think. Um, I did a really cool uh, Ford Raptor. It was a full print wrap graphic with a, 
like American flag, bald eagle. Um, I got to do uh, some yellow accents on a Porsche, uh, Mercedes, Teslas, like the Chrome deletes. And nice. so, you know, I, it was just like, it was fun. And they, you know, they of course had me start out more with the commercial stuff, the vans and, um, the fleet vehicles and, uh, box trucks and trailers and all of that. But, you know, I was paying attention to the kinds of jobs that they're giving to me. And, you know, they're always the ones that required a higher attention to detail. Right. And that was something that I really like was focusing on, like, especially just learning. And I've always been kind of a perfectionist growing up. So, um, like I said, it kind of felt naturally and, um, you know, I've always been really creative and I've had my hands in so many different projects, like growing up, um, when I came upon car wraps, I felt like this was my niche. This was finally like my niche craft. Like I can actually do this. I feel good about it. Like, you know, of course I still have more and more to learn about it, but that to me was a really good feeling was actually finding this uh and seeing some like purpose for me behind it um, especially having to make the the major career change in my life too oh my god yeah <laughs> going yeah. from like an office scene to now you know you could be in a garage you could be outside you could be mm-hmm. inside it's like you're kind of not stuck in one place which is kind of good i mean that's that's the reason why i I loved rapping was i was never doing the same thing every day whether you know looking at numbers all day looking in a book and computer it's you're in the garage you're doing production you're talking to clients you're doing a survey you know whatever the case may be yeah i love the i love the the it wasn't so much freedom because that's part of the job but the freedom of that, like able to do different things every day was, was nice. Mm -hmm. You know? And I think more of like the, the creative aspect of it too. There's so many possibilities with vinyl that you can do. And, you know, there are still like, I still have a lot of ideas that I haven't been able to actually try out yet because, you know, you just haven't seen it done before. And, um, you know, and I guess that's kind of what I was going for when I wrapped my car is I wanted to do something that nobody's seen before. Yeah. Yeah. You've got a yeah. lot of embossing on your, on your yeah. car and different colors and stuff like that, which is really cool. Mm-hmm. That must have taken forever to weed out, mask, stick on, yeah. and then, and then <laughs> it's wrap. It's about 10 hours of weeding. Jesus. Alone, and now, then another 50 hours of wrapping. And, and literally, so, the rap kitty is kind of the name you are kind of going by now for your own personal, um, kind of business side or your side, yeah, your, your side like money for the rap industry. My portfolio of work, I guess. So you, so your car reflects all of that, the rap kitty. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's funny because well, I've always liked Hello Kitty, but never like the childish side of Hello Kitty. I like to, keep it cute and classy um but i named my car kitty that's awesome <laughs> your license so, plate says kitty right uh, it says hk cutie hk cutie that's what it was yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been the the other pl- was it that the other plate the minnesota plate said kitty on it that's the only plate that i've got right now uh, you still have that plate on holy cow I'm working on it. <laughs> You're working on it. You know, you should only have 30 days when you move hey, to another hey, state. Hey, you wrap me up. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. I don't think I got any Arizona police officers listening to the show. So I think okay. you might be all right. <laughs> I'm working on it. No, I'm going to get the same license plate, but the Arizona one. So Nice. Nice. So you got yeah. 10 hours into that thing. So tell us a little bit of like your, your concept in that car. Like what you got going on and what you did. Oh, I just, I had just 10 hours in weeding. Just little uh, Hello, I, Ki- just Hello Kitty look logos, right? Yeah. And then it was like another 50 hours to wrap and emboss my whole car. 
Jesus. Um, and do, do you regret it? <laughs> like um, doing it? Yeah. Or like, it, it's nice when you look at it now, you're like, okay, cool. It's yeah. done. Yes and no. Uh, there's a lot of little things that I hate about it, but you know, those are the only things that I'm going to notice. And you know, I still want to rewrap it. I want to redo the whole thing, but I also don't like the brand of vinyl that I used on it. Would you use uh, on it? Vivid. Vivid. Okay. Yeah. So, right. um, I, I chose the vinyl because of the color and I chose it before I really knew that much about materials mm -hmm. and the difference that it makes. And, um, also because of the, the embossing, it, you know, created another level of difficulty um installing it because if i had got it up got it too hot but you know it would actually gloss out on me because it's a matte metallic vinyl that i use so. yeah um but you know like i said there's a lot of little things i hate about it but to everybody else that looks at my car and you know it's it's just fun to drive around and see how many smiles I can put on somebody's face. Because <laughs> that's a good feeling. <laughs> yeah, and I honestly I wasn't anticipating that when I wrapped my car. I wrapped my car for myself because that's Expression you know an extension of me. Yeah, right. Um, but you know when I see little kids' face light up, like "Mommy, look at the Hello Kitty car!" Like. You know, it, it makes my day. <laughs> That's awesome. Plus, it's 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 a good little advertising perk for yourself in, in what you do. Right, exactly. I mean, it, I think it showcases the kind of creativity that I have. And I I feel like I have a different eye for things. And I, like I said, I have other ideas that I want to do. I'm just trying to find, like, the right person to, to do it. And, you know. Design-wise? Design <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah, like, you know, somebody that's, like, willing to do something crazy enough to their car and, and pay for it. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. We're all looking for those clients all day, <laughs> all day long. <laughs> that's, the right. that's the name of the game. <laughs> right. That's so funny. So, I mean, so, you know, I'm going to ask, what don't you like about the uh, about your car wrap that you Cause... you've noticed? that other people might not other than the material um well, did you learn a lot when you wrapped it oh absolutely yeah oh <laughs> um well vivid first off is is much thicker than most materials so trying to get it around corners make it look nice um like i said if you get it too hot it kind of glosses out and you get more of a sheen to it and that to me is really noticeable, but to everybody else, they're looking and touching the rest of my car. So. <laughs> <laughs> they might not notice uh, it too much. Yeah, right. Right. Um, and, and I want to rewrap it. I want to do the same colors, but I want to do it in Avery. Is is Avery kind of <laughs> like your your go to? Media? Yeah, right now they're they're my favorite. Yeah, I guess you could say. Um, what have you what What have you learned now, like as far as like media, for yourself? Ha have you learned a lot? Like what? Oh brands, yeah. What, how 3M works, and then how Avery works totally different than 3M, and right, yeah. So I've never had any kind of certification training at all. I've just been self-taught and taught from shops. So it's just all hands-on how I feel it, how, what I notice when I'm using it. Um, you know, if, if, to me, I feel like 3M is kind of plasticky. Um, whereas like Avery, it just, it li glides on, you know, lays down really nice, more, more like almost natural. like fabric, but yeah. not quite fabric, but yeah. Yeah, I totally, I totally get it. Avery, Avery, I've worked with Avery, uh, a lot, uh, in the recent months, and I, I've noticed a huge difference because I, I, I came from a 3M shop, so 3M okay. was my preferred 
media for printing as well as, um, you know, the 1080 series was like all the time at my shop and, mm-hmm. you know, switching over to Avery, it's kind of like a different animal. You know, you got to really preheat yeah. it. You really got to um, squeegee a little bit harder. The adhesive is a little less like tackier. You know what I mean? You yeah. got a little bit more play with it. Um, but you know, for me, I think, I think Avery's changed my life a little bit and, and, and I'm starting to like Avery a little bit more right. for, for my personal, my personal, um, experience with it, you know? Yeah. So I think I started rapping right around the time when Avery was changing that because the shop I was working at, they had some of the old Avery stuff and it sucked, mm. and, but And then all of a sudden we had all this new Avery and it was like way better. So I guess, you know, it was a privilege (laughs) just still being newer to the vinyl industry is getting to work with the better products. Um, you know, not to say that years of experience you guys have. (laughs) Cause the vinyl industry is a lot older than I really realized it to be. Yeah, I mean it's not that bad. I mean from start to f- from start till present, how many years have you been working with vinyl now? Uh 2 years? 2 years. So yeah. I would have to say I'd almost have to say you are probably the freshest person I've had on the show. <laughs> that's in, in into the industry, I think, 2 years. I don't think there's been anybody that's been under that two year mark. Oh, that been wow. re- really no. Yeah, but you bring a I'm whole, <laughs> yeah, but you bring a whole different perspective because you haven't really seen or worked with the stuff that we've all been working with in the last 10 years. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. So it's like you, you, you kind of, you kind of bring a different perspective as far as like being fresh into it, new fresh eyes, brand new industry for you new business mm-hmm. plan for you to get into the industry and, and, and kind of getting your, your perspective and what's going on now, because we've all seen the evolution of the printed media, where it came mm-hmm. from, from the original V V one from three M with that little hexagon, little hexes lines on the, on the printed media um, up until now. You know, with almost no type of um, design on the front of the vinyl now. It's nice and flat. And, you know, the way technology's changed with the uh, the cast media, you mm-hmm. know, you, you can move it around, slide it around, and it's pre- pressure sensitive, and it wasn't really that pressure sensitive back then. And mm-hmm. you, you kind of... You shed a little bit more light on certain things, certain topics than, you know, people who have, who've had, you know, like I said, five, 10, 15 years in the industry doing this. So it's nice, you know? Yeah. Um, so I mean, I guess that was one of the first things I noticed is when I got into the industry, it's the different types of material. I was like, okay, now I got to learn every different kind of material. Like, And I mean, there's still some some types of material I haven't worked with yet, but even just having a good feel for how material works and paying attention to it, I feel like I'd be pretty confident working with most any material, um, you know, as far as once I get my hands onto it and play with it a little bit, um, you know, I want to be able to do any kind of material. I don't want that to be a, a hinder um, or a pr- kind of Achilles heel for you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, definitely. Um, cause I mean, and I guess you, you can only learn by trial and error. So, Absolutely. uh, you know, life, my car. <laughs> yeah. Um, vivid is notorious for, uh, leaving adhesive and, it's a pain in the ass. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you you're learning. You're learning by fire, which is probably the best yeah. best way to learn. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you can take these classes. You can take things away from these classes. You can learn a lot more from being certified. But at the end of the day, you still have to apply them day in and day out. 
happens mm-hmm. when, when you're when you're working and you you know you don't have the luxury of having that person there next to you saying don't do this but do that use this material not this material and mm-hmm. you know w- w- up up until now which which medias have you worked with other than Avery and Vivid and maybe 3M have you like uh, kind of installed like Oracle or or Fold excuse me or like KPMF I've done KPMF uh KPMF is really nice uh just needs a little heat to make it work nice because mm-hmm. otherwise it's it seems really stiff and brittle yeah um I have a little samples of Hexus um I haven't had a chance to actually use yet but um uh let's see I've got some samples of Arlon too and the Arlon Reflective. Mm-hmm. And, um, I've also been playing around with some tint films. Um, so like smoke tints and then also some window tints. Nice. You're getting into uh, win- window tinting too? Yeah, I'm trying to. Um, <laughs> I just, you know, practice on my own car, practice on a friend's car. Um, but I've also done some PPF Photoshop too for about a month, which was not my favorite thing. <laughs> oh, you don't like to put on PPF? <laughs> no, I don't like being wet. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely you, you gotta enjoy like your, your hands being soaked the whole time. And nope, I can get my hands dirty. I I don't like getting like sopping wet. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's totally. just unpleasant. Yeah, but it sucks. I mean, I can do it. It's just you know not my favorite thing. Um, nice. and, you know. Hmm? So you da- so you dabble in a little bit with everything, which is good. Keeping your options open. Right. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Any plans on doing any certifications in the future? Um, I would like to, um, as far as financially, I am not, I don't have any current plans for certification. Yeah. Um, but like I said, that's something I, if I have the opportunity to do it, I will. Which one do you think um, you, you take for your first, um, for your first course? Uh, I would like an Avery certification. Mm-hmm. Um, I guess, you know, I would like a 3M certification too, because 3M's from Minnesota, but, <laughs> and they're a big name. You were yeah. right there, and then you moved <laughs> yeah. away. What the yeah. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're right in your backyard. <laughs> could, could have saved you that, uh, well, I mean, your, your parents still live there, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so you got, you got a place to crash and oh, yeah. drive to. Lucky. Yeah, it's always an option for me. So, I mean, like I said, if I get the opportunity, <laughs> I, I'm definitely going to jump on it. So. Yeah, definitely considering that it's like right there in your hometown, backyard. Mm-hmm. and But you know what? The good thing about a- Avery and 3M is that there's so many courses and classes everywhere now, mm-hmm. uh, especially now that, you know, you have Justin and John Duver and – so many other great trainers and instructors in the industry just, mm-hmm. you know, doing classes in Florida, Arizona, Texas, Las Vegas, New York. I mean, they're just everywhere all year and you're able to take those courses there as long as you can fly out or if they're local to you. I mean, back then yeah. they were very, very far few in between. I mean, handful of classes for the whole year. Because it was still so fresh, who who knew what was going to happen? And right. you know, as years progressed, you know, it was more instructors, more trainers, and they're able to provide more classes throughout the United States, um, as well as overseas. You know, Justin travels everywhere, but um, mm-hmm. you know, to to make it more available for us shop owners to attend, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely something that I want to look more into this upcoming year, so. Nice. Do you have any more goals for the upcoming year or years coming up? <laughs> Maybe potentially op- uh, opening up your own shop? Uh, 
I mean, just running what I've got going now and keep building my own name and my portfolio. Um, I want to try to look at working on an online shop to sell decals and maybe some other stuff that I can make. Um, you know, I got lots of ideas. It's more a matter of finding the time to sit down and do them. Yeah. Yeah. And then also, uh, getting my car, uh, so I can sh- enter in some shows next year. Um, Hot Import Nights is the one that I'm, the big one that I'm shooting for. Nice. So. That's a definitely um, a great, great place to showcase the restyling side, the customization side of the wrap. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I want to bring some competition to the other scions out there. <laughs> so. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Um, I also want to look into going to Toyota Fest this year too and bring my car out to California. Um, just cause I think that would be a really neat experience. Um, be among other Toyota and Scion enthusiasts. So. Yeah. I mean, marketing with the type of car that you have is such a great idea. And, you know, to, to attend those events and be able to get clients out of it, that's a win win. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're going there for, for pleasure. You know what I mean? To have fun. Right. But you can take away two or three clients out of that, 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 that was worth the trip, you know? Right. Yeah, exactly. That's so, the best part. I mean, it's both work and pleasure. So, so uh, as far as like your clients that you get now, how do you kind of go and approach new clientele and, and advertise yourself now? Um, uh, right now, I guess it's been a lot of word of mouth. Um, uh, people from my car club have been supportive and, uh, you know, trying to get sales for me. And, um, so I get a lot of people messaging me over Instagram, uh, for quotes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if somebody is serious, you know, I say, let's meet up, you know, I can take measurements of your car. You can look at sample books. Um, we can get a better quote dialed in for you and, uh, go from there, you know, Definitely. So, are you competitive? Yeah. Are you competitive with your pricing? Now, the only reason why I'm asking that is because we've had this conversation almost every episode, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. seventy episodes in, and it comes up every fucking time. It's it's about yeah. we always talk about you know people in the industry that you know do it from home or do it as a side gig and kind of come lower on pricing because they feel like mm-hmm. they're starting their client they're starting their client base and they want to get as much vehicles out in the road as possible to right. build up that clientele in order to you know open up their own place now like as far as your pricing structure and how you price everything out do you know if you're competitive with other shops that are doing similar things or even the shop that you work at you know, as your full time gig, as far yeah. as like what what they would quote it for. Right. Yeah. So I'm. I always ask my chef like what to like, kind of get like an idea of what they would quote something for. Yeah. Um. But of course, their quotes are much higher for other reasons, and um, you know, I don't know if it's just the way I am, but. I feel like I always like under quoting myself, like, mm-hmm. because I do want to get the work. I'd rather get it than not get it because, you know, I quoted too high and they didn't want to say no. They just said, Oh, okay. Right. You know, instead of like, cause it's hard to be able to negotiate a quote too. I guess that's something I still need to figure out. Like, you know, what's your price range? Oh, we could do this or you know or some people will be like oh well this shop quoted me a thousand dollars out the door for this 3m color and i'm like well you know i I just can't really compete with that like you know the kind of time that i want to spend on the vehicle isn't just going to make sense so uh, to me i still don't really understand how other people can or other shops really can quote out like that and do that kind of work and you know still turn a profit Right. Right. And, you know, still have a good name in this industry, too. Right. 
Because right. that's the other thing. I always want to, I want to see what that kind of work looks like and be like, you know, I want to know what they're offering and how much they're offering it for. And like, you know, is that really my competition or is it just like, it just seems like they would be my competition. Mm. At uh, least, I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> no, at least you know right from wrong. You're not just going yeah. out there and saying, yeah, I'll do it for a thousand dollars just because the other guy's doing it and, and know that you're right. paying six, seven hundred bucks for a freaking roll and what you're going to make 400, right. 400 bucks, you know, $100, right, exactly. $100 and then you a get day. Into, yeah. You get into the job and it turns out to be way more work than you, you bargained for and you're spending right. way more time on it. And then it's just, doesn't end up being your time being worth your time. And thankfully I haven't gotten into that situation where I've done a full wrap that wasn't worth my time. It's more uh, little stuff like Chrome delete little. In- yeah. I like stuff little like interior pieces, which doesn't seem like a lot, but it is because it's little and you know, four or five other shops don't want to do that for a reason, but right. I will. <laughs> right. Uh, so I mean, I'm still trying to find a balance, but, you know, I want to work with my friends and especially the people in my car club, but, you know, they help me out and I'm going to help them out and vice yeah. versa. So, yeah, I mean, th- there's a difference between helping out, you know, your, your close friends that, you know, will get you work and won't give them, you know, their price. Be like, oh yeah, mm-hmm. she did my car for two hundred bucks. She'll do yours for two hundred. Uh, no, that's right. Car, that's car club pricing, bud. Come on. Yeah, right. I gotta put food on my or, table and stuff, you know. Yeah, or I had one person say, uh, "Oh, but they said that you'd do it in one day," and I was like, "I've never said that I would do a full wrap in one day." <laughs> <laughs> maybe interior work, uh, especially yeah. not by myself. Yeah, maybe like. <laughs> half wrap or something but yeah or commercial wrap but um so uh, you know there's still a lot of things that i'm figuring it out and um you know it's always going to be a learning process it's going to be a never-ending learning process it's, right right but, you're totally right and and if i yeah. have any piece of advice is don't don't compromise on your price um because as soon as as soon as they realize they can get you down, it will be a never ending battle. Right. Yeah. Even at the end of the transaction, they'll, they'll, th- those people tend to be the pickiest at the end mm-hmm. of the day when you give them a deal and stuff like that. It's, it's like, Oh, okay. Well, you know, I, I really didn't like the way the bumper come out. Can you knock off a couple hundred bucks? And it's at that point, you, you've already, you've already lost your profit. You know, right? Yeah. So there's, there's no, there's no reason why anybody should shortchange themselves, and especially since you you're in the industry as a full time gig and doing this on the side because of the fact that they don't do the restyling side that they're, they're more commercial and signage and right. stuff like that. You see both ends of it, but mm-hmm. you know, if you can base it off anything, you know, I think you got a good base off of the your full time gig to know what the right pricing would be and cost of material. And I, and I would still a- allocate overhead, you know, whether you, whether you give your boss a couple box for using the garage after hours, you know, always tack that in there. Why not? Right. You know what I mean? Whether, whether you're not, or, you know, whether you buy them lunch once a week, if, if you're that, if you're using it constantly, you buy them lunch once a week or whatever. Allocate, allocate it like, like you, you do have overhead. I mean, you have a cell phone bill. That's a business, right. that's a business phone. How much is your bill every month? Break, break it up and find out how much that comes out to per day. And you'll mm-hmm. figure out real quick, like what your operating costs will be per day after hours, you know, to figure out what the, the cost of material and, and all that stuff, how much the job should cost you. At the end. Right. Everything costs money. You 100%. Know? Yeah. yeah. Don't, don't, don't. Just because maybe, you know, some people say, oh, you know, I work out of my garage. I already pay rent, but that doesn't count. No, motherfucker, that, that still counts. <laughs> you're working after hours and you're yeah. working in your garage. Does that garage pay for itself? 
No, <laughs> you still have to pay for that. Like, yeah, you still got to figure that out. Like, it can't be, it can't be a, a, a freebie deal because by the time you're done with it, you, you made no profit. You have no money. Right. You know, it's, it's a crazy game that we play. And, you know, there are a lot of people out there that, you know, don't know what their operating costs are. And then they think, oh, I'm going to get out of my full-time job and go full-time in the wraps. But, you know, it's fun and it's a great industry to be in when you're doing the work. But we tend yeah. to forget there's a business side of things that comes with it. Right. You know, you know, your legal stuff, your insurances, your certificates, your liability, your like your everything, your overhead Home supplies. Yeah. yeah. Your rent, how much, you know, if you, if you run in a printer, you know, ink costs money. You got to have mm-hmm. back. You not only have to have ink in your machine, but you have to have backup inks. Just in case that runs out, it's not like, oh, I ran out of ink halfway through the printer. I got to go pick some up. It's, you can't, you can't work that way, you know? Right. And it's, and I think people tend to forget because honestly, I can honestly say I, I didn't know when I started a business. I didn't, I didn't know any of that. I'm like, yeah, my rent's 700 bucks a month. As long as I can make that every month, um, I'll be all right. But, you know, who wants to make 700 bucks in a month? Not me. Right. Yeah. Not me. I want to make 5,000 and pay all my bills and my rent and my rent at home and my car insurance and my cell phone bill. Like I want to mm-hmm. walk away with some money in my, in my pocket, not right. just skate by. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. And you know, for the, sh- the shops that I've worked for, you know, I kind of got to see like, what it's like to operate the business and like, you know, the owner's running around with like a chicken with a head, his head cut off. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't really want that right now. Like, you know, especially, you know, I told you about my concussion about three years ago. Like it's, I can't operate like like I used to. So I'm really trying to take it one step at a time. um, Use the things that I have in my disposal to my advantage. So, um, you know, the shop that I work at, they're really cool about helping me out and showing me stuff or, you know, letting me use their stuff. And, um, so, you know, I'm really happy with where I'm at right now. And, um, I also feel like I've got a lot more to offer and, you know, this next year should be interesting too, to see where I'm at. Um, and don't discredit your, your college degree. I, I mean, there's, <laughs> I mean, there's not a lot of us that are CPAs. You, you have, you <laughs> almost have like a larger advantage than a lot of us because you can do your taxes. You can, you know, your, you know, numbers. You know what I mean? Like you have that side where that could be a really big asset to you as mm-hmm. far as like business. You know what I mean? Right. Like, you, yeah. Like you've you've done numbers for other companies, corporations, small businesses, large businesses. Like, yeah. You know how that shit works. Like to me, that shit is gibberish to me. <laughs> like seriously, yeah. like QuickBooks is like, <clears throat> like people look at Photoshop and Illustrator, like yeah, right. I look at QuickBooks, like yeah, right. You know what I mean? That's like, <laughs> yeah. I can write an invoice up. But as far as like consolidating my my month's uh bills and and um and balancing and balancing yeah fuck that I'm good <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay somebody to do that that, is, that <laughs> yeah. I know for sure that is not my strong suit but right. but you got an upper hand you know what I mean yeah in some ways you could say that i mean the way i see it like i i wish i would have went to school for graphic design because you know i i can only imagine all the things i'd be doing with a graphic design degree too right now like so but i've also been kind of looking at going back to school online for that and yep. see if i can do do something with that in my free time and you know but 
It's never too late. It's never too late. You right. can, you can figure it out by sitting with a good designer that I can explain a lot to you. You could figure a lot mm-hmm. of that out because on, to be honest with you, I figured out like the graphics part of it back in high school. So when I got my, yeah. my associate's degree in, um, visual communications and computer science, I, I, I knew more. I almost went into college knowing more than my professor did. Like a lot <laughs> of the short keys, a lot of different styles. Like obviously they went by the book. So it was always like kind of everything was just by the book. And it's, it, it really sucked because I never really went by the book. I knew my own right. shit and you know, it was a lot. I flew by a lot of my classes, but then like my normal stuff. Which would be like business stuff, you know what I mean? Like, like the stupid like accounting bullshit. You had to, you had to take that. Like, no, thank you. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I I scrape by by the skin of my teeth. But yeah, it's 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 never too late to learn because I learned back in like, let's say two thousand two thousand one. 2002 I was doing Photoshop that was like Photoshop 5 or Photoshop 6 or something like that <laughs> so we're going back way back like <laughs> like the background was black and gray and white like that's how it was back then like everything was super like oh my god compared to what we see now on the screens compared to yeah. then it's like holy shit like night night and day so maybe you would have some input. Do you think it would be worth going and doing an online degree versus just trying to figure it out and YouTube videos and I would to say do design? I would say if you can afford to pay a monthly uh subscription to Photoshop and Illustrator, which I think is like I don't know. I don't pay a monthly one. I still have my old school old school photoshop on my computer um i think it might be like 20 bucks a month yeah or something like that a month if you can take if you can afford that and slowly watch there are some great videos out there like like trish from we print raps um Mm -hmm. her designer which is her name is escaping me right now she's got a lot of great videos on how to mock up um, vehicle templates for okay. outputting to design. Um, and there's, and there's some other videos on there as well. But I mean, if you could figure out the basic, you'll be able to expand off of that because, right. because it's a different, it's a different type of graphic design. That, that's, that would be the only, I, I, I would never want to tell somebody don't go to school. Like mm-hmm. it, it's very different. Um, in this particular field, if there was a specific, if there's a specific course you can take, which I'm almost positive that, um, Dan from IBOW. Okay. So Dan and I are really good friends. Um, uh, if you look up IBOWtraining.com, you'll find out more information, but he comes to different shops. He helps out different shops and, figuring out and teaching their employees like the way the shop should run, the way production should run, the way the machine should run, the way the designer should design the best and to get the best output and like a lot of different things internally in a shop. He comes in and kind of, he's almost like, um, you ever watch that show, the profit where he comes in and like, um, comes in, write the check, get 60% of the business, but like he flips the business all around and makes it better. Oh, okay. He's, I guess I'm thinking of like bar rehab, but yeah. Yeah. It's similar. S- s- same yeah. exact idea. So he comes in, refreshes up everybody, gets everybody up to speed, changes things, makes things simpler and mm-hmm. then walks away and then lets them do their thing based on all the new material. Basically, that's kind of what it is. He comes in, he rehabs the whole shop. To be smoother, more efficient, making sure that the, the employees are the right employees for the job, mm-hmm. like things of that nature. Like, I think it's really good, but 
Dan is a great graphic designer uh, for the rap industry. I mean, he's created masterpieces. Um, so, like, if you're going to be specific in the vehicle rap industry, taking a course in that aspect, yes. I'll throw your money at that as fast as you can. Okay. Problem is, when you go to college and you're getting a graphic design degree, they're going to give you everything, which is going to be right. like in design, pre press. It's not going to be rap industry related. So, mm -hmm. unless you want to learn that, you know, you want to get into like building business cards and flyers and brochures and advertising promotions and things of that nature. Right. Yeah. I mean, will they help? Yes. Is graphic design different than rap design? 100%. Yeah, right. 100%. Like you, you, you will not be able to take away a, uh, as much information if you took a specific course in rap design than you would get an associate's degree. You wouldn't know the difference. So are there actually classes for rap design then? Or is this just like YouTube videos you're talking about? You can learn a lot through YouTube videos, how to set up okay. your files and like get a basis of how to get things started and then you'd have to expand off of that mm -hmm. but i'm almost positive that now dan, dan is starting this new training come 2019 where he, he's going to be traveling a lot more and he's going to have shops um he's going to be able to come into shops and get other people in that area that want to take this class and he's going to focus on different things, inst installs, designing, pricing. Um, all, he's going to have a whole like plethora of different, different things. And, 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 and this is something that him and I have been talking about and, and that I'm hoping to promote and, and help, you know, get more awareness about it. So yeah, I, I don't want to be interested. Yeah. So like, I don't want to like, say something that isn't true. So don't take me word for word, but I'm almost positive, you know, graphic design, as far as the rap industry stuff, like commercial and stuff mm -hmm. like that. I think that's going to be a little bit of the class, but then it's going to be a lot more like the install and stuff like that as well added to it. Yeah. But if you go to the, uh, IBOW training.com, I believe that's the web address. Um, Go on there, and I think they've already got a couple of um, dates for different cities that okay. they'll, they'll be in. Um, but definitely look into that. Reach out to Dan. He's very good at sending emails back. Um, if you got questions okay. about stuff, he'll help you out. Um, super, super nice guy. He's helped me out tremendously with the podcast and, you know, spreading the word and, and helping out in mm -hmm. that aspect. So, um but like I said, taking taking a class in that is going to be a lot different than taking, um, you know, some type of college course. Right. For See, that. I guess the one thing that I'm afraid of is, you know, I'm going to pay for the subscription and then not have the time to, to use, use it, it. And then it's going right. to, you know, withdraw again. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So uh, I guess I feel like. I feel like it's going to be the opposite for you, though. I think if you pay for it, you, you're going to make yourself use it. Yeah. So it's not true. a waste. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I just haven't pulled the trigger on it yet, but yeah, I've been thinking about it a lot. So if that's, if that's where you want to go, if that's where, like the type of like area you would like to go, cause we all talk, we, we, we all talk about like the commercial side of it. Like, that mm -hmm. kind of pays the bills and the restyling can pay the bills, but it really depends on your demographic and where you right. are and how much business you can kind of generate to, to kind of be able to live, you know, off of that and right. make a career out of that. Um, you know, I'll tell you for me here in the Boston area, I can never make a career out of the, you know, livery and customization side of it. And I know a couple businesses here that, Make a living off of that. Me mm -hmm. personally, I just, I, I can never pull that amount of work and keep me busy every day with, right. with color changes. That would just drive me nuts, I think. 
I think. <laughs> to each their own. You to know? each their own, right? I, I come from the commercial side and, 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 and shame on me, you know, maybe for, you know, swaying more to one side than the other. Uh, but th- that goes back to being just old school. You know, that's where I yeah. made all my bread and butter. That's where I, I put all my eggs in one basket. Don't get me wrong. If I got a $350, um, uh, Chrome delete package, I'm, I'm throwing that in, in between a work day. You know <laughs> what I mean? I'll make that money. Yeah. But it was never anything I really went out and pushed heavily to get that type of work. I always pushed more of the commercial side because I could always sell someone on a commercial or some door lettering over, hey, you want to wrap your car for a few thousand dollars? and Right. You know, oh, and I feel like it's easier for a company to spend money on marketing than somebody to spend money on personal enjoyment. You know? Right. Right. So. 100%. 100%. Yes. And, and, and yeah. it's a return for, for the commercial side. They're mm-hmm. gonna, they're gonna spend a few thousand on a wrap, but they might get tens of thousands in work because of it. Right. Too. So yeah. the, the, the return on investment is higher on a commercial. The return on investment is more for, uh, a restyling is more personal. Like, it makes right. the owner feel good. It, 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 like you said, it, it kind of, um, self expression for them. Yeah. And sometimes that's, you know, there's people out there who throw tons of money at that, want to wrap their <laughs> Lamborghini or something like that. I mean, we, we see that eye candy all the time. Right. Just got to figure out where they are. <laughs> well, that's the thing. They're far few in between. There aren't that yeah. many shops that are continuously getting high end cars. On a weekly right. basis, it's, it's kind of, um, I don't know. It's, it's, it's not realistic. You know what I mean? True. You know, it's not every time, you know, it's, it's a lot harder to work those clients, but commercial, I mean, there's always commercial jobs every day. New fleets coming out that want to get their all, you know, 100 trucks done, 50 trucks done, whatever the case may be that, you know, can pay the bills a lot right. easier but yeah so i mean i know those people are out there and that i guess that's the other reason why i want to get more into the design side of things so i can actually like show kind of what my ideas are in my head and start just like keeping all these ideas to myself and and then i finally get a person no oh, hey i got this and this and this this idea and that's not what they're looking for at all you know right so um design sides definitely a whole nother creature. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, if you can get into more, if you can ease into it with more of the sticker side, do, do you have a plot? Do you have a personal plotter right now? Um, well, I had, there's one at the shop and then I also have a cricket machine. Yep. That's, if you know what that is, yep. um, it's the- more like a craft plotter. So, right. Um, it works for vinyl. It's not the most ideal thing, but because you have to use their software. So, you know, I'm not getting any exposure to Adobe Illustrator with it. Um, but yeah, I, I try to use that and do what I can with it. Which is limited too, because it's only what, mm-hmm. 20 inches or something like that? It's like 12 by 24. Okay. So. Yeah, so you're limited to that, but. If you could invest on, um, you know, a cheaper, you know, maybe, I don't know, 36 inch plotter would probably be a good ideal start. Yeah. For size. And then you typically those come with their own software that you plug in. Typically mm-hmm. they run on, um, Windows, um, Windows software, which. Okay kind of usually sucks a lot of us are apple people um so yeah it it it, it's kind of weird it doesn't they still haven't figured out how to sell those things with um software that's compatible with apple which blows my mind because i think they'd get a lot more clients out of it but yeah and that's weird you know like it's 2018 and (laughs) they still can't figure it out i know tell me about it it's it's in you know recently i just looked at one and uh 
that like, yeah, it runs with Windows and it specifically says not compatible with Apple. And I'm like, how? H- how is that possible? You know? Yeah. But you get yourself one of those, you figure out a little bit of the programming, the software that it comes with is really good as far as like kind of getting into like the vector side of things, which mm-hmm. I'm sure you kind of understand, you know, with yeah. welding and stuff like that and, you know, creating your own um patterns and stuff like that. So, you know, getting that, I think kind of r- really helps the design side of things, understanding that. And I think yeah. that, that plays a big part. Right. Yeah. And I feel like as an installer, um, being able to learn more of the design side of things just would make me a more well-rounded installer. Yes. Um, you know, cause if you're the one taking the measurements on the vehicle and actually cutting them to the size and then putting them on, like, you know, if you miss something somewhere along the way, you're going to know why. And, you know, it's just something to keep in mind in the future versus if somebody else is doing it, and you tell them, oh, hey, this is a little off. It's like, you know, are they going to remember that? Or, you know, is it just swept under the rug and whatever? Just install it. Like, Right. Right. Yeah. Um, be- being so- knowing both ends is very important mm-hmm. for sure. And, you know, I just never want to stop learning either. So I guess that's kind of my attitude towards it. Yeah. Yeah. Even Even now, just YouTubing videos now and getting familiar with – certain tools in Photoshop and Illustrator and knowing the process will help you later because, you know, as an installer, you want to be able to talk to the designer and be like, listen, I need this profiled in this manner because it will help me install it faster and Mm -hmm. you're still going to get really good quality, whether it's, you know, flipping the van on a on vertical panels to horizontal panels or vice versa whatever you're more comfortable with Mm -hmm. i mean i always like doing them horizontally because i can get a a full side of a a van slapped on in like 30 minutes yeah you know and then and then do all your trimming and you know all your other stuff you know window cutouts and rolling in you know uh concaved areas and such and yeah. whatnot. I, I mean, it's just, it's just easier when you know that you can do that and, and not just do what the designer says, Hey, this is how I do it. And this is all I know. Right. Yeah. You know, when you can walk in and be like, no, can you do it this way? Because it's going to save me time. Time is money. I'll be out of here in three hours as opposed to seven. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it definitely <laughs> depends on the job too, you know. Right, right, 100%. But at the same time, you can always, you know, look at things on that, you know, on the side, whether you're designing them or not and, and get familiar with them now. Mm-hmm. So that way when you do want to pull the trigger and, and pay the subscription for Photoshop or Illustrator, you'll kind of have more of a basic understanding of how to how to set things up because it's Mm -hmm. really like so you can go one way over the other way so you can go full scale at 72 dpi or you know 85 dpi you really don't want to go crazy high because your your um your files are going to be really big and at the end of the day when you go to rip them it's just going to take forever Mm, um so you can either go full scale at 72 or you can go uh one tenth scale at 720 which is kind of and if you look at it it's kind of like flipped so you can't have one you can't have one you can't have one with the other like you can't have full scale at 720 and you can't have one tenth scale at 72 it just doesn't like it it doesn't huh. work in that manner Okay. So either your template's going to be 100% full blown, like your measurement's going to be exactly what it is on the screen as a, as it is on the car at a lower DPI. Oh, I re- see what you're saying. Resolution. Or you're going to have it one tenth scale. So for every, 
So for every two inches, it's 0.2 inches. Okay. If that makes sense. You you move the decimal point uh, yeah. over. So it, I've never thought about it like that before. <laughs> yes, it's very it's very um it's very confusing because if you didn't know that, it would really make designing a wrap fucking miserable. <laughs> because I yeah. because in, in in his 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 kind of like a perspective, you know, when I was in school designing business cards, flyers, brochures for clubs and stuff like that in Boston. I'd always, de- I'd always design my stuff at 300% DPI. At, at, you know, four by six flyer was nothing at 300%. The quality was freaking mint. But if I ever designed, you know, a pickup truck that was 200 inches long by 60 inches tall on my computer at 300%, you know how long it would take me to move stuff on the screen? Forever. <laughs> Even to save it would be a nightmare. It'd be like 20 minutes to save that type of file. <laughs> so needless to say, I learned a lot my first couple months of figuring out how to design wraps and, and figure out what my DPI should be and how to not lose quality, you know? Yeah. And, it, hmm. and believe okay. me, it's, it's that part is that if you can get that part, done i think the rest is kind of easy okay i think that's the hardest part (laughs) yeah i'm definitely not gonna forget it now i just i think it'll start to make more sense when i actually get in there and see what it is yeah yeah and uh, intricacy stuff like your your shadows and if you're gonna use illustrator more than photoshop and you know it it it's really preference no matter what, I think everybody does it a little bit differently at the end of the mm-hmm. day. We all kind of get the same results. Um, it's just whatever you're comfortable with. And you, you'll have to figure that out. Right. You know? So. Yeah. It's well. a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Yeah. I'm not going to lie to you. It's, it's, it's a lot of work. I guess that's the other reason why I haven't jumped on it is because I know it's going to be overwhelming and, uh, a lot, so. But that's okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I want to take on a new challenge, and like I said, it's something I've been thinking about for a while. So I, I think you've really helped me, and you know, I'm gonna look into those resources, and I'm gonna get on it. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I um, mean, and that's the best part about the industry is that there's so many people you can reach out. I mean, you've got Christina Christina McKay from Curvaceous. She's a great you know, woman influencer in the industry that, that specifically mm-hmm. only does design work. She doesn't really, well, I mean, no, I take that back. She's installed a few things and she, she actually in, installed a lot of her vehicle that she has. Um, okay. but she's mainly a designer. She designs for a lot of people in the industry that have different shops, you know, mm-hmm. and then you've got, um, who else do you got? You've got, Crystal from Candy Wraps. She's a mobile installer. Okay. Um, I believe she kind of can design, dabble with a lot of that too, but I think her main, her main focus is just installing. So she, she works mm-hmm. for a bunch of different shops as a subcontractor and installs wraps all day long. That's her gig. Oh, okay. You know, I only just recently started following her. So yeah, Christina's a great influencer. Um, so have you started following um uh women of raps? Yes, I did find that page. Yep. Too. Uh, I've been meaning to reach out to them and see what's going on. Yeah, if you if the, so the main person, <clears throat> excuse me, the main person running that Instagram would be uh Jen Carney. She's from Florida. Uh okay. her and her husband have a great shop uh called Carbon Wraps. They do a lot of um they do a lot of restyling. Like their their main goal is restyling, and they do a lot of printing as well for the shops, custom designs and stuff like that. Great, great person to get in touch with. I think Jen Jen would be ideal to kind of help you out with a lot of that stuff. Okay. You know, you know, and and that, like again, 
not to be repetitive, but a lot of people in the industry, you know, if you, a DM goes such a long way, like you cannot be afraid to reach out to these people and <laughs> ask, ask a question. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's, yeah. That's one thing I've noticed about the industry is there's a lot of cool people, uh, that you meet. Uh, like just, I went to RapsCon for my first time this year and, you know, I you met did? a lot of cool people. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> How did I not see you there? I don't know. I was there. Uh, did you? I guess I didn't know who you were at the oh time. Oh my goodness! This is all still new to me. Oh my goodness! That's crazy. <laughs> did you end up going to the Raps VIP party as well? Yeah, you did. So the Raps VIP party was, is put I together. I was in the purple Hello Kitty poodle skirt. Oh my god! <laughs> I probably did see you and, and didn't even. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I did, like, I guess there were a lot of people there that are, like, big names in the industry, and me, like, not knowing anything about anybody, I'm just there, I'm like, oh, hi. Little shy you, <laughs> see? Yeah, and then after the fact, I realize it, or, like, find these people on Instagram, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit, is right. Should have been talking and networking. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I definitely look forward to next year, because, you know, I think I'll have a little better grounding as to, you know, everybody and their work and... Well, people are going to know who you are after this conversation. You know that, right? Uh, apparently, yeah. Yeah, I'm sure you'll gain a little bit of a following from it, and I'm sure there'll be a lot of people reaching out to you to to help out, you know. And that's yeah. one thing I always try to tell everybody that I talk to. You know, if if you ever need anything, send me a DM. You got to uh, – if, you, if you think you've got a small, minute question that may be a bother – or something that's like, oh, I re should really know this, but I don't know it, and I feel bad asking. Mm -hmm. Like, don't. Like, send the fucking DM. If you need an answer to something, <laughs> ask. Don't feel ashamed because Sorry. at one point I was there, and yeah. I had to swallow my pride a lot of the times, and it would take me hours to figure out when all I had to do was just ask a question and I probably would have gotten an answer within an hour. Yeah. You know, and got a little <laughs> bit ahead. Thing, <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I've noticed that I, I really like, you know, not just the work, but the industry itself and everybody that's in the industry. Like, they're all really helpful. And, you know, there's this whole community of installers. And it's, right. Uh, you know, it's not like anything I've ever seen before. Or, you know, I, not any kind of industry I've ever worked in before. Like, it's incredible. Yeah. So great uh, big variety of group of people a lot mm -hmm. a lot of different um a lot of different people in the industry and a lot of them have come from different backgrounds whether it be you know grew up in the sign industry or mm -hmm. um came from you know blue collar you know businesses yeah. to get into the industry it's it's kind of neat to see all walks of life walk away from a different career to get into this career. Yeah. I mean, it goes to show you that there's so much potential, um, so much potential in this trade, in this craft, like the freedom of doing what we do, putting stickers on cars and getting paid for it is like a funny scenario. Like it's, it's kind of <laughs> funny to say out loud yeah, Cause you're like, explaining it to somebody that doesn't know what raps are. Right. Oh. And then, and how many times do you get when people ask you, so what do you do for work? You say, I'm a rapper. And then they give you that weird, like, look. Like, <laughs> what? And then you're like, chicka, chicka, yeah. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's when you come yeah. up and, and say that. Right. <laughs> I'm like, no, just kidding. Not that kind of rapper. No, can't can't spit any fucking beats or rhymes no. if I wanted to. No, <laughs> that's so funny. But that's the uh, that's the number one. That's the number one thing we would say. It's like, ah, oh, no, yeah. I'm just kidding. I put stickers on cars. That's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it 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 you know, at the end of the day, if I could say anything, it's just you know. 
reach out to as many people as you can, follow as many people as you can, ask as many questions mm -hmm. as you want, because I feel like you, you'll you'll get an answer. You won't get like a a dumb answer from anybody. Um, I know I don't say this often, but even being part of uh, the Rap Institute. You know, I know yeah. I don't bring I bring Justin up as a whole as an instructor, but I, I I tend to forget the Rap Institute is there for newbies or even veterans up there to learn new tricks, to get new techniques, mm -hmm. to watch in in as small as a video as it may be, from like a three minute video to even a twenty minute video, whatever the case may be, you can learn so much from just watching these videos because not only are you hearing it you know from the person that actually you know knows what they're talking about it's not like you can get wrong information out there i mean we all know so some videos yeah. on youtube are great some video videos on youtube aren't so great i mean right. you don't want to be learning the wrong technique but subscribing to the rap institute which i think is only a hundred and something bucks for the year or like 15 bucks a month or something like that um i think it's worth it you know for someone like you where mm -hmm. justin talks a lot about everything ppf window tent um knifeless tape commercial industry uh color change industry just like anything that has to do with the rap industry he is like he's got videos and tutorials and blogs about everything and i think mm -hmm. if you've got the money to spend maybe start off there you know what i mean yeah definitely because i mean i've watched a few videos and um it's not even so much as to how they're installing it it's more like you know, they give information about how the material is made and why it reacts this way or, you know, so like th they do have a lot of good information on there and I, I try to watch them whenever I can. And they've just got so many videos. <laughs> yeah, the, there's a lot. There's definitely a lot. Yeah. But I think as a, as a newbie, you know what I mean, in the industry, I think you, mm -hmm. I think you'll take away a lot from it, you know, bus mm -hmm. business wise as well as. In installation wise because I, I feel like that's kind of like where you kind of want to go right is more of the installation side oh yeah yeah now do you want to like be like a mobile installer for different shops and be just the contractor to come in um i have done some contract work for other shops and um i mean so far i found that it's not the most ideal situation mm -hmm. but you know I, I can always make things work so I'm, I'm always open to work um you know it, you just as long as it, you, just you know as long as they're gonna commit <laughs> yeah i mean walking in the nightmares long, yeah <laughs> but <laughs> Well, you know, but, come on, sh share share uh, a little bit. What what what's the worst? What's the worst job you've kind of walked into as a contractor? You know, showing up to do an install, and you know, what, what do you, what do you got to work with? I mean, I walked into really nice shops and, and other shops. You know, it's like they barely even have a table to lay material on, or there's cords everywhere. It was not enough lighting, like. You know, it's it's just not fun mm. doing those kinds of stuff. And it's like, you know, if, if I really don't have anything else and I, I need the money, I need the job, like, yeah, I'll do it. And, you know, I'm helping somebody else out. But, um, you know, so far I haven't had too much of that. I can, you know, get, get my clients to come to me, to my shop. Yeah. So, um, I don't know, never say never to anything you know right just because i had one bad experience with something doesn't mean it's going to be like that every single time right right um you know i can just be more prepared for it next time you know so ask more questions um, yeah things of that nature yeah so. it's just a learning experience that that's mm -hmm. take every day as something new and 
you know, le- learn from that, build, build some type of contract where you, yeah. you know, you have certain things in writing. Right. That too. Um, yeah. Cause that's something you don't want to, uh, have any miscommunication on is you pay and how you're getting paid or when you're getting paid. Um, cause I've been dealing with those frustrations too. So. Yep. Yep. A lot of us, that's, that's the, that's what we all have to deal with it being business owners is, mm-hmm. you know, getting paid, you know, if it's a commercial job, 15 days out or 30 days out, thing, things like that. Or, or when it's a restyling job, making sure they bring cash or whatever the final payment is when they pick up. And sometimes they never, they never seem to get that email at the end of the day. And, <laughs> show up and they're like oh can i come back tomorrow it's okay yeah pick up your car tomorrow too and (laughs) that's that's fine yeah right yeah so that's all stuff to tread carefully on and learn from your mistakes and move forward that's it what do you think the the hardest mistake you've made to date that Mm. you've made that you know really sticks with you like on every job that you just like okay not today you're not, you're not getting me today <laughs> on this job you know what i mean there's always that one um, that one stickler that that got you that one time that you're like that motherfucker like it ain't happening again <laughs> um i mean i guess the, the one that sticks out but doesn't necessarily stick with me every day because it was a PPF job, um, I had to redo the PPF on the roof of a Ferrari. So when I went to take it off, I took a nice chunk of clear coat with it too. <gasps> <laughs> and my heart just dropped and, you know, it felt like my soul left my body and I'm like, oh, I can't. <laughs> oh my God. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, this was for another shop. So, you know, they had the, the insurance and all of that in place. So, you know, I pray that that doesn't happen to me with one of my own clients, but you know, you never know. So it's, you know, if I always ask, have you ever had your car repainted? You know, if you have, there's always a chance of it coming up when you take it off and, you know, trying to be, trying to have a very well-informed client of all the if, ands, and buts and, Cause you know, I don't want to be put in that situation where I'm going to have to pay for that to get it fixed because right. it was my fault. You know, I, I mean, I can admit to it, it was my fault, but. But at the end of the day, you know, if you have a contract in the beginning stages and, you know, something to that extent in the contract speaking about removal and potentially, you mm-hmm. know, you come back in a couple of years and want to get removed, you know, you have that documentation that could right. potentially cover you for something like that. Yeah. Cause the clients half the time, they don't know they, they buy these fucking right. cars. They're like, yeah, it's never been painted. And then you can kind of see like the quarter panel isn't quite the same color, color as the fucking door. And they're right. like, what do you mean? It hasn't been painted. <laughs> like you can't see the difference. Like, yeah. I feel like I've noticed that a lot more out here in Arizona because the sun damage is so significant on vehicles. So it's something that I, I'm really trying to pay attention to because that Ferrari happened back in Minnesota. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. But since then, I've also learned that Ferraris have a really soft clear coat. Mm-hmm. So I think that might be part of it too. Um, uh, what was the other one? I think uh, was it the Ferrari or Porsche. Oh, no, no, no. Um, a Lotus headlights are known to delaminate. So I went to tint the headlight and we had to redo it. So I took it off and, uh, it, the lamination came off with it and then it looked terrible. And then I'm trying to like buff off all of the rest of the lamination and just, you know, learning those things after the fact. And, you know, you gotta do what you can to make it right. Yeah. Hard lessons. Have a happy customer. Yeah. That's it. Like, like I said, fortunately, I've 
worked for another shop at that time when those happened. So it's, um, you know, it didn't fall back on me financially to fix it, but something I never forget for sure. Now that I'm doing it on my own. So, right. Um, yeah, you definitely have to think about, you know, insurances and liabilities mm -hmm. and, and things like that. When, when you become serious, I mean, when you could fall underneath the umbrella of another shop, fine. You're, mm -hmm. you can skate by as long as you're working for them. But as soon as you go off on your own and it's, it, it's your ass, you know what I mean? It's, it's, right, yeah. you know, that Ferrari, you know, imagine if, you know, that was you and you walked into that shop, what's going to happen? It's, the owner's going to go after the shop and then the shop's going to go after you. It's going to be it's just a chain, chain reaction of who touched it, you know? Right. And all the insurances are going to go after the last person who touched it <laughs> at the end of the day. <laughs> and not, not having, not having the proper insurance. I mean, that could potentially, I, I mean, I know I've said this numerous times that can close a business down that day. Right. Like, just as fast as you started, it can be all taken away, plus some, if you don't have the proper, proper, um, business insurance or you're, you know, you're not incorporated. Oh my God. Yeah. They're taking your car, your cat, your dog. They're taking everything from you. You know what I mean? Oh gosh. That's, yeah. Don't really don't want that to happen. No, no, nobody yeah. wants that to happen, but. You know, I've, I've seen other businesses, not rap related businesses, but I've seen other businesses just go under. They'd have to go bankrupt because of a bad deal or some, something really hardcore happened and financially they're not able to make it right, you know, mm -hmm. which sucks. But. Right. But I mean, yeah, now having that happen to me, it's just even more precaution I, I think about in approaching anything. Like, you know, for the commercial side of things, it's not as big of a deal most of the time. But, you know, I, I try to be very careful when I approach the custom side of things. Like, because that's where your customers are going to be very picky and, you know, that's mm -hmm. their baby you're working on and, you know. You have to be understanding of that, but you want your customer to be understanding of uh, what you do, the limitations of the material, your expectations. Like one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Let's let's yeah. uh, let's switch gears a little bit. Let, let's talk about some tools and stuff that you know. Now, given that you know the installation side is kind of your passion and what you do, let's let's talk about like what type of tools you mm -hmm. have and and how you run them do, do you run them in just a regular um a regular pouch do you just have do you go old school and stick a blade and squeegee in your pocket and that's all you're running uh no right now i have a fanny pack that i use it's been working it's okay it's not most ideal um my i want to make a fanny pack that's a little more customized to my own set of tools and what i need yes. and be able to access them easier um i love fanny packs <laughs> i love fanny uh, packs it's fun i got it cuz it's purple and sparkly but nice you know <laughs> um my first pouch i made myself and it had like a nice magnet on it and it fit everything that i could have and that was just when I was starting out, and then I got more tools, and then more tools, and then I couldn't fit everything in my pouch anymore, so <laughs> I had to figure something out. So I have a fanny pack for now, and then I have, like, my tool bags, my tool boxes. Um, I think my favorite squeegee right now, or all-time favorite, would be the APA Yellow Squeegee. Um, they're just, like, little, and they're, like the right firmness and mine's pretty well seasoned. So like the corners are nice and rounded and I can just really get into like the tight spots and just get it where I want versus like the three M squeegee, which is like a thicker edge. And, 
Are you um, run, are you running any buffers on your squeegees? Um, not the APA one. Um, yeah, I just have like the monkey tails or the Kid Pro series. Um, the wet buffers mm-hmm. are nice. Um, I feel like I need to get more tools. I'm about due for buying some new tools and upgrading some. But yeah. Do you, yeah. do you have any like tuck tools or anything like that that you use? Yeah, I have the Avery Denison tool and I have like the Sunny Tucker tool. Mm-hmm. Um, have you looked into I've tried yellow some tools? Of the, yeah, the wrap sticks. I've used them before, but they're kind of expensive. So I haven't really jumped on them yet, but mm-hmm. I see everybody posting about them and stuff. But. Yeah, so far, ex- the tools that I've been using work. So, yeah, expense ex- expensive is good and bad. Expensive means it's really well built, and you're probably going to get a lot more, right. a lot more out of it. Um, mm-hmm. I've I've noticed that you know the tuck tools that Avery has. I did like three jobs and I had to throw them out. Like the like the 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 tips get all messed up and like. It gets all weird yeah. on the flat end, and I—I I mean, it's, it's. Well, I guess my Avery tool is kind of rounded out now, so you know it's pretty well seasoned. <laughs> Put that use into it, yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure, yeah. definitely, definitely. So, you're using the APA squeegees, couple tuck tools. Mm-hmm. What do you What are you running for blades? Just a regular Ulfa? Yeah, Ulfas are my favorite. Um, I tried those red blades and those sucked. I couldn't believe how badly those sucked. (laughs) Like I couldn't cut anything unless I literally stabbed it. And then I'm like, okay, maybe it's just this blade. I try another one. Nope. I I keep trying. And I'm like, okay, somebody else try one of these blades. (laughs) Could it it get it to work? Yeah. It just sucked. I was like, what the heck? You know, these are more expensive than the Ulfa ones. Um, I was kind of mad at myself for trying it, but you know, I wouldn't have known otherwise. So right, gotta try yeah. it out for yourself. You don't yeah. know until you try it. Right. So you got uh, squeegee knives, tuck tools, anything, anything crazy that we don't know that you. you I got um, at RapsCon. I won a raffle, so I got like a little Geek Tools tool pouch full of tools and. Uh, uh, mag belt, really so big mag bag neck strip. Yeah, I was really happy about that because I saw the guy walking around with it and he was wearing it, and it was a pink one. And I'm like, oh, I want one of those so badly. And I couldn't find where to buy it. And then here the last day, and everybody's packing up their booths, and this guy's throwing out raffle tickets. And I'm like, oh yes, and uh, I somehow won it because that was the only thing that I wanted. Um, but that thing has been awesome. The it's like I looked it up online. It's, a lot it's like one hundred sixty dollars. Yes. Yeah. It's a leather one, right? So, no, it's not leather. It's it's like fabric, but um, oh well, the mag the mag strip is the pouch is leather. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a really nice but, pouch. Mm-hmm. I always said if they took away the magnet part that you had to wear that belt and put a clip on it, I would totally jump on that. Yeah, I think that would be a little more easier to just, you know, slap on your pocket. But um I've been using the mag belt because um, when you lay that down on a piece of vinyl, that vinyl does not move. Right. And it's amazing. It's a great hinge mechanism. <laughs> yeah. So instead of having to go buy like a 12-pack of magnets that are like, you know, yeah, they, they, those things cost a lot too. <laughs> they fucking hit the floor and they're toast. You can't put that on a car anymore. Yeah. It right. sucks. You know what I do at the bottom, uh, the bottoms of mine? I either put like a felt, like a couple felt, like I'll go to like, um, so up here in Boston, there's like a Michaels or AC Moore or something like that. Yeah. It's like a craft store. You'll know, you know, a craft mm-hmm. store. You go get like one of those. Yeah. Cause you do a lot of crafts. You, you know, yeah. Where um, you get those felt adhesive, um, backed stickers 
and I would yeah. I would cut the shape where the magnet would go, would where it would touch the uh, the vinyl, and I I'd put those on there and switch them out like a couple times a month. You know what I mean? If they fell or something okay. like that, and that helps. Yeah. That helps, um, you know, decrease scratches when you're moving the vinyl around, or you got to pick up and put down, pick up and put down on on the mm-hmm. vinyl. Um, that would always help like tremendously, and especially if they fell on the floor, you just rip it off, clean it with some oh. alcohol, put a new one on, you're done. You know? Yeah. That helps out a lot. Yeah. And never leave a magnet on on vinyl. That you just vinyl. laid. Yep. It always right. it always leaves the magnet marks on it, mm-hmm. which is always a big. That's a that's a huge lesson to learn. Right, it sucks. I wish there was some way around. It. <laughs> <laughs> there's no way. There's no way of getting that out once once mm-hmm. it's on. You know, so that's so right. funny. So that's cool. You won that pouch. What? Well, that was worth the trip. Yeah, that's right. A couple hundred bucks. Just in that pouch and magnet, right? Damn. Um, so, yeah, I was pretty stoked about that. And I use that thing all the time. And I'll even use it as a belt, too. And then I just throw my knife on it. It's like really quick rather than going all the way into my pouch. And, yeah. You know. Um, I had a magnetic squeegee for a while, and then I lost that. I need to get another one because it was really it? handy. It's magnet. I don't know. <laughs> Did you leave it on a it's car? A good you could have left it on a car. I, I don't think so, but I guess I wouldn't put it past myself. That's so funny. <laughs> Those are really cool. Uh, uh, what else is there? Shoot, I just thought of it, but I don't know. There's so much stuff out there. It's like crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I, um, I guess it's not really a tool, but it's kind of an accessory to my torch. I made a little hook piece for my torch, so that way I can just hang it on my belt loop instead of setting it on the, the ground. Yeah. So I really like that a lot because it just makes my torch accessible. I don't have to bend over a lot. Like, Given that we're so. on the, uh, the magnet talk, there's mag straps that can go around your torch that you can put onto the car. You ever hear of mag straps? Yeah, I've heard of them. I, uh, I haven't actually seen them, but I feel like they would just be so aggressive, like on the car itself. And plus, if you're working on, you know, an entire side of the vehicle, you can't just slap it on there because you're still working on it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, could- I'll send you a picture of this this hook that I made for my torch. I I like it a lot. I feel like. It was really simple to make. I feel like it'd be easy to to sell if anybody was interested. But see, there you go. What? There you go, making tools for the industry. <laughs> That's what it's about uh, too. Why not? Something different. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this was easier to execute. I'm trying to think of ideas for other tools, but it's like, how would I even go about putting? You know, even making a prototype. I don't know. Call, just, call I always Ernie. have ideas. <laughs> Call Ernie at Yellow Tools. <laughs> the, the Yellow Tools is very, um, very into tool making and very generous as far as like when we come up with ideas, they're able to execute mm-hmm. them and then prototype it to where it's like a hundred percent. And mm-hmm. so, some of the sales come back to you for that. Okay. You know what I mean? So if you got any great yeah. ideas, you know, reach out to Yellow Tools and they'll make it come to life. And, and they're not shy as far as like giving back to the industry for that person that created that tool, you know, to make a little bit residual okay. off of that. Okay. Okay. See? Yeah. I met Ernie at RapsCon, so I'm going to have to hit him up. See, there you go. <laughs> and, and, and it's kind of, well, you're in Arizona and he's in Cali, so it's not that bad. You probably get your tools like next day. From him, if you were to yeah. order, okay, I gotta wait. I gotta okay. wait like five days over here on the east coast. <laughs> I'm waiting for them to open up Yellow Tools over here. It'd be yeah. it'd be nice, you know. Yeah. Cut down on that shipping, the shipping cost and uh, lead time. <laughs> five days after you order something is like, oh my god, it's like a little kid waiting at the mailbox. <laughs> You've been spoiled by Amazon, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> 
you know me too well already. <laughs> We've only been talking for two hours, and yeah, yeah, Amazon has spoiled it for a lot of us, actually. Yeah, <laughs> the fucking buy it now button, you know. Yeah, fourteen minutes before you know, buy this in fourteen minutes, you can get it tomorrow by f- eight 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 p.m. <laughs> it's like what, really? Let's test it. <laughs> Just buying, <laughs> buying shit that you don't need. It's crazy. <laughs> but it's mm. fucking at your door. And, you know, it's a matter of mm-hmm. time before they figure out how to put everything on Amazon. And soon never, nobody will be leaving their house. Be buy, <laughs> right. Buying wraps on Amazon. Mind-blowing. <laughs> right? You're laughing. You're yeah. laughing. And I'm sure there's yeah, a lot of people laughing holds. that are going to be listening. And you know what? Laugh now, but let's talk in 10 years. Guarantee <laughs> that dude will buy out all the rap shops. And you're only going to have to get a rap from fucking Jeff Bezos. That fucking guy. He's got his hands in everything. It's crazy. Hmm. Are you thinking about it? About what? Are you thinking about that? Like how that's going to work? Are you Wraps th- on Amazon? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was kind of thinking more like what the next five years in the industry is going to be like, you know, five, ten years. Like, what do you think? Given, given, given that you're, you're fresh and you kind of, you kind of know, you kind of know enough now to where you can kind of talk more, m- more elaborate. You know, into yeah. the conversation and, and, and know your way around. What do you think in five years? Where, where would you like it to be? Oh, man. That's a big question. I don't know. It's a, it's a very loaded question. Uh, yeah. I mean, I want to see more, I guess, the creativity side of things. But as far as like technological amb- innovations, I'm drawing a blank, but, um, do you think it will become more of a um, robotic installation as opposed to a manual? You, do you ever think that our installation side would ever be compromised by a robot in some way, somehow? Do you think we'll get there? I don't know. You never say never, right? That's fucking, um, that's mind blowing, isn't it? Just to even think yeah, like, wait a I minute. Mean, I don't, I don't want my job taken by a robot. <laughs> I don't think anybody does. <laughs> no, and I, I, I don't think anybody in the industry is going to be inventing that because they'll be taking away jobs. Right. But. <laughs> right. But imagine um, all the, imagine all the work you get, could get potentially get done faster. Right. Ooh, that's like right. a, that's like a catch twenty two. Right. I don't know. Maybe if we just had like a little robot that would hold the material for you, like when you're wrapping a bumper or something, like that would be cool. Uh. <laughs> mm, almost like a, uh, what do they call that little uh, house, like uh, broom Swiffer the thing? Roomba. The things? Roomba. Yeah. If we had like a yeah. little. Or, or what was that lady's? What was that lady called from the Jetsons? The the little maid. Oh. Oh my God. I have no idea. <laughs> is that beyond your time? How old are you? Uh, twenty seven. Twenty seven. I know. Yeah. I know the Jetsons. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Yeah, I watched all the nineties cartoons. Yeah. Th- those were the best cartoons back then. Oh yeah, absolutely. The shit they come up with now, it's fucking, it's crazy. But yeah. yeah. Um, I forget her name, but like something like that where it's like on wheels on the Roomba and like she's on a post and she's got two arms to kind of help you like mm-hmm. push Just it like along. Keep the material spread. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, that would be kind of cool. Um, I don't know. I, I want to see more colors, more like color shift variations, like. Mm-hmm. Um, different finishes, like the iridescent finishes and stuff like that. Um, becoming more of like a, uh, um, buy it now type of product as opposed to how they're doing it now with 
laminating the different oh yeah i guess um because like even because my favorite color is purple Mm -hmm. so i look very closely like every single purple that each brand offers and there still isn't a very big selection of purple right so even you know create your own yeah see there's just a whole lot of possibilities you know ton of possibilities (laughs) take an overland take an overland uh, taking lamination, you know what I mean? Or dashing mm-hmm. colors, more sparkles, whatever the case may be, or, uh, things of that nature and over laminating them to, you know, the supreme rap film colors to, to create your own color or, or sheen or look. That's become what well, kind of like the new trend. KPMF, mm-hmm. KPMF puts out a lot of over lam. Um, custom Overlam products to do that with. I, I would love to see that becoming more of a like buy it now product where you can buy a block that has, you know, an iridescent laminate and then yeah. have a, a shift color in it that has, you know, the, the rainbowed fucking, uh, flake in it, you know, just yeah. like, I know it, it costs money to make all of it and to buy it and to stock it and it's a lot easier just to laminate it. But the laminate just adds that extra two mil, you know? Right. To it. So it's kind of now you're making the media thicker and a little bit more of a you know, installation, you know, making your installation yeah. a little bit harder, but not really, but you are, you know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. so, I mean, doing that, I mean, I, I love to see it be more widespread too. You know, I think you kind of nailed, nailed that on the head, you know, as far as colors. Yeah. yeah. I have some other ideas too, as far as using lamination into a design, but you know, I don't want to give away too much cause Shit. I want to do it. <laughs> You're going back to secrets. But, I haven't, I haven't had people hold secrets in a long time <laughs> on <this> show. <laughs> Everyone's like, oh, you're going to have to wait. You're going to have to no. wait. It's like, well, no, I mean, come on. I don't know. Maybe I could tell you, but I don't want, I don't know if I want it on the show. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. As long, hey, listen, as long as you execute it at some point next year. How about that? Okay. If not, we're, we're gonna revisit now. this again and you're gonna have to spill the beans. Fine, okay. It's a deal? <laughs> okay. Alright, good. Deal. Good. Okay. And it's on air, so you can't, you can't back out on it. Oh wait. Yeah. You're oh, gonna oh, air oh, it or? Uh, uh, you... Yeah, I'm gonna air it. Fucking A right, I'm gonna air it. <laughs> yeah. This shit's oh. documented now. Oh jeez! Yeah, now, now you have a goal for next year. It okay. is to create whatever you're gonna create with whatever overland design for your car mm-hmm. or or another car or whatever the case may be. That's that's your goal for next year. Yep. Got to accomplish now it. Is. it. <laughs> now it is. You gotta write it. It's on the list. Yep. On top of okay. everything else. You know, you have yeah. <laughs> for business and whatnot. So, and, and, and you have, you, you, that's another thing too that we, I don't really talk too much about, like creating goals for yourself. You know, I, I feel mm-hmm. like, I feel like everybody starts the business and gets the business rolling and, you know, they, they fall into like, um, they kind of just fall into the business and they're just like, it's always the business, 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 but there's never a plan set forward for next right. year or six months or three months or quarterly, whatever the case may be. There's never goals. You just kind of just like, oh, another job, great. Oh, another job, great. It's like next thing you know, you're in, you're in the business for a couple of years. You're making some money, but there's no goals that you've set for yourself, you know? Yeah, I mean, I have creative goals. Like I said, I want to be able to execute my ideas and, you know, advertise, you know, do it more as a piece of artwork rather than just an installation, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's 
my goal in approaching jobs next year is get make more art instead of just raps. I so. like that. I like that. Anything yeah. else you got on that list? <laughs> Don't forget about that laminate shit. <laughs> gotta write that down. Yeah. yeah, that's definitely a big one that's been on my mind. Um, How about business business goals? As far as like, like what you like? Do you have a do you have a set like goal? As far as like, not maybe time where potentially you'd want to break off and be able to do be on your own. Yeah. Well, I think I'm just. Trying to start small with my goals right now. I don't want to bite off more than I can chew. It's, mm-hmm. And I always end up shooting myself in the foot. But um, definitely a website. There you go. And, um, you know, just keep posting more of my work on my Instagram because that's, like, my portfolio. Um, you know, keep doing car shows to reach out to people that want to do the crazy cool custom stuff. Mm-hmm. Build it um, up. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think in the next year or two, I'm gonna rewrap my car. So nice. Yeah, I think it's just more of a matter of where everything falls into place. Yeah. Um. Just time. Yeah. Just time. But I mean, writing it down, looking at it once in a while, set setting. Setting those goals and, 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 and not setting, I mean, everyone has like big goals, but I think setting reasonable goals for yourself. Don't like, mm-hmm. don't like blow it out of the water where, you know, it's not going to happen. Yeah. Right. That's yeah. why I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm going to have a shop in one year. Right. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And, you know, like, I'm I'm okay. Like yeah, yeah. That, that, <laughs> that's, that's a couple of years down the road. You know what I mean? Yeah, right. Not I mean, next. I want to keep networking and keep you know find these people on Instagram. I want to learn about these people that are, have been in the industry because you know this industry is still new to me. Um. So what? So what yeah. do you? So what do you think? Like as far as like. In, in industry or non industry, like who, who influences you right now that you kind of look up to? In the industry or? It can be in or out of the industry. Oh. Who keeps you motiv- motivated every day to kind of push forward and keep creating kind of art pieces as opposed to just it being a rap? job you know what i mean it's a good question right Uh, yeah i mean my mom has always been a big influence to me always pushing me and you know she believes in me even when i don't believe in myself like and you know wanting to do good and make her proud and um Uh, I mean, I guess I got a lot of my creative side from my mom too, so it's definitely where it all started. And um, what's your mo- what's your mom do now for work? Is it creative? No, she-, she works in a factory. Mm-hmm. Uh, she works in a factory assembling uh, commercial air conditioning units, but. So my mom is Japanese, and back in Japan, she had a bachelor's in art. And when she came into America, she, you know, the degree wasn't really good in the States. So she worked in a bakery and got into factory work. Um, But she's always cooking. She's always in the kitchen. She's making something or she's brewing up kombucha or, you know, she's always still had this, like, um, creator's spirit, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So that's um, cool. Do you yeah, do you speak Japanese? Very little, unfortunately. I wish I knew more. But. Yeah, L- learning a another language can be difficult for sure. Yeah, 
I feel like I know more Spanish than I know Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <laughs> being in, a, in LA and California, that's, that's definitely, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it definitely helps. Arizona, yeah, it definitely helps for sure. Yeah. But, Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Um, I guess, well, the other big influence in my life, of course, would be my dad. Um, I guess this kind of plays into my background, but not really rap related, um, as far as being a female in a male dominated industry. Um, I was in wrestling when I was in middle school and high school. And I mean, there's big support from my dad. Um, just being there for me the entire time, pushing me, encouraging me and, you know, so being a female in a male dominated industry is nothing new to me. Um, that's amazing. How did you not bring that up when we were talking about your background? <laughs> I mean, throwing that curveball towards the end. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> It's like, yeah, by the way, you should do wrestling. What the fuck? Yeah. Like, how did you leave that out? It wasn't exactly rap related, but I, it's okay. Fun. It's okay, but it's, 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 it, it ties into kind of what you said. It's, it's being a female in a male dominated area. Like, mm-hmm. holy shit. How, now, were yeah. you the only, only female in the school? Like, wrestling yeah. other, other guys? Yep. Now, now uh-huh. I'm going to have to ask, how is the uncomfortableness of that feel for you? For me, I, for me, I never felt uncomfortable. It was never that weird. It was just a sport and I wanted to play and I did. But like when we go to meets and tournaments and you could tell some of my opponents would be really nervous and like scared and they yeah. don't know what to do. It's like, you know, it's, it's not that I'm a girl. It's that we're wrestling. And we're here. Do you have brothers? Do you have brothers? No. You don't? I have one younger sister. Okay. All right. <laughs> I was going to say, if you had brothers, man, you know, get the, you know, that tough love from them. And right. All that good stuff. Another sister. Yeah. No. Wow. She was in hockey, but. Really? So kind of. Yeah. So you guys are very, very into, you know, which probably set the stone where you know where you can you can tie that into anything and and and, mm-hmm. and be able to stand stand your ground do your own thing in any type of industry whether it be you know dominated in 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 more the male side or even the female side a lot of females get intimidated by the, by other females that really have like that ambition and that big like aura when they walk into the room just just like oh you don't want to fuck with that girl right there like (laughs) she's crazy you know what i mean (laughs) like you just got that weird vibe by certain people that just like ooh, okay i'm gonna stay over here you know right yeah and i mean i'm not gonna judge anybody or think of anybody a certain way unless they give me a reason to you know um that's just the way i was raised but um, so I think it, it was interesting to see how other people would react because it was something different. Like, Ooh, it's a girl. Like, be careful. Like, don't touch her there. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, I would think that would probably be the worst sport to be in where you're basically physical with the person and the likelihood of hands going somewhere where they're not supposed to is probably like, Oh shit. Like, how many how many term, tournaments did you win? Um, I can't remember how many wins I had, but I had twelve career pins. Wow, which wasn't very many, but I mean, it's still something, you know. It's an accomplishment, but, though. Yeah. Hell yeah! And just doing it, you know, I stuck to it. I did it till I graduated, and um. You know, it taught me perseverance and never give up and blood, sweat, and tears. And, you know, <laughs> I felt like it was a really good experience for me. And my dad was a big part of that. And, you know, I feel like not in the same way, but it still relates to me now yeah. in the industry. Like, you know, I'm not here to just play around. You know, I want to do big things. And, right. 
Instil- oh. instilled that in you in a young age, which is great. I, I can only, um, you know, I can only think that to instill that into, into my, I've got two girls. Mm-hmm. I can, I can, I can only try to instill that in, in them to think that they, they can do whatever the fuck they want to do. Mm-hmm. And nobody's going to tell them no. Right. There's nothing stopping you ever. Right. Except for yourself. Right. You, you, so, are, you I mean, are your worst, I don't want to say enemy, but your own, maybe. Your worst critic. Yeah. Like, oh, like, yeah, I would say critic. Yeah. You know. And believe me, I still battle with self-doubt all the time. Like, it still comes up all the time. But, you know, I just, Push you have to it. believe in yourself and, you know, confidence is a big factor, so. Yeah, for it's, sure. You know, it's something that I want to do and it's something I'm passionate about and I know that it will work out because I'm putting the work in to do it and, you know, I'm not here to just cut corners or take shortcuts or, because <clears throat> in wrestling you can't take shortcuts. There are no cutting corners and <laughs> you're either right or you're wrong. You, you make a bad move or you make a right move mm-hmm. that determines whether you win or lose. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, and, uh, practice doesn't make perfect. Uh, practice makes permanence. Wow. So that was one thing that really stuck to me too. Cause if you keep practicing something the same way over and over and over again, it's not going to make it perfect. You're just going to get really good at doing it that way. So. I apply that to raps too, like. Ooh, I don't even think I've heard that terminology here yet. <laughs> Holy shit, dropping some knowledge right now. I like that. Yeah. It, so. it fucking makes sense. Mm-hmm. You could just get good at doing it that one way, but someone gives you a fucking curveball. What do you do? You can't do it that way no more. Right. Yeah. Fucking genius. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, so you know, I had a big, a lot of big influences in my past. And it's brought, it's all been a part of what's brought me here today. So. Right, right. Damn, and I was gonna ask, you know, if if you had any piece of advice that you would want to give, like a new installer or a new business owner or someone that just is listening that hasn't pulled the trigger yet, as far as mm-hmm. like getting to that next step as far as the the industry what do you, what do you think one piece of advice you would give them i think you gave out so much already it's, it's like you what keep are giving you, me all these loaded questions yeah well, like where can you take this right now because i think you've already answered uh, that but you know yeah i mean just the experience like getting hands on and doing it because you can watch videos all day long and then once you get to it it's a whole nother story so i think just actually getting to do it whether it's your own vehicle or a friend's vehicle you know um i'm a very hands-on learner so that's the approach i like to take when i'm coming on to something new so you know not being afraid to try something new, mm-hmm. especially when it's on your own vehicle. You know, you, you might fuck up or it's okay to fuck up a little bit because it's your own. Right. Um, trying to think. <laughs> <laughs> I think you uh, gave out a lot. And, and that was like, <laughs> that was like another question I wanted to ask. But just because you're, you're so new to the industry, it's, you, you're almost being like an influencer for, people that are only a few months in a month in a year in where Mm -hmm. they're in limbo you know do they make that jump and work for somebody in the industry and get out of their full time and sacrifice that or even start their own business Mm -hmm. and totally go that route yeah i mean for me i had to take a big pay cut when i started in the industry um, but I also needed the job. So I took it and, you know, I was able to make it work for me and I also really enjoyed it. So of course I wanted to keep doing it and it, and you know, it wasn't about the pay after that. Like mm. I found something that I really like to do. I enjoy coming to work. I feel like I have 
uh, you know, an impact on the work that I actually do, you know. So that to me was worth more than the paycheck. Of course, the paycheck's always nice. You need, need it to live, but, right. um, you know, if, if it's comes down to that and you're trying to make that change in career, if you can make it work, do it. Because, you know, it's, it could be life changing. It was for me. So, um, you know, I'm in Arizona now doing this and I would have never thought I would have came out this far doing it. Right. Right. So. You've made dramatic changes and lifestyle changes and mm-hmm. uprooted your, your living situation to a completely different state and have made mm-hmm. it work. And, and that just goes to t- tell you like, as far as like being in the industry, you can take this anywhere. Every right. city, every state has multiple wrap shops in it now. Yeah. Or even, even if you start out at a sign shop, you know, there's still lots of things you can learn from a sign shop, um, that are applicable to the rap world. Right. So, um, you know, there's sign shops everywhere. Um, I feel like I was going to say something else. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've said, I mean, you, you have literally opened up like these, this last hour with knowledge and information, you know, as far as your background and where you've come from, where you're going, you know, and, and just mm-hmm. general information on the way you've, been kind of living your life as far as like being in the rap industry and how how everything's changed. I I think you have a tremendous, uh, unbelievable story from, you know, that unfortunate mishap of getting that concussion to yeah. rebuilding those skills back up and, you know, getting into the industry. You know, you probably wouldn't have been in the industry if it wasn't for that, you know. Right. Yeah. See, I was kind of forced, I was forced to make a huge change in my life and I was able to make it work for the better. Right. So, I mean, if I think if I were able to do it over again and consciously make that choice Mm -hmm. and change it, you know, I would have more control over how it would have all happened. But you know, sometimes you don't have control over those things and it just happens and you have to make the best of it. And, you know, it's life, but if, you know, you have to seize the opportunity and when it's there. Yeah. What do they say? When life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Lemonade. <laughs> That's it. You, you've definitely made lemonade out of this. Mm-hmm. And, and I think you're going to go very, very far given that you, you've only been doing it for a very short period of time. I mm-hmm. think I think you're gonna make your mark very very soon, and you're gonna go places. Thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah, and, and the rap industry is 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 gonna be um gonna be able to. I mean, I've talked to numerous people that you know they've traveled the world because of the rap industry, and mm-hmm. I think if you're able to take that um take that into consideration and be mobile and be a contractor and see the world. I mean, these people are going to pay you to travel and install wraps. I mean, that, yeah. that, that can't, be, you would never get that from a CPA office. No. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? So, um, I, I think give, give yourself some more training, you know, come up with that plan, do mm-hmm. some, do, you know, figure out the design side. You know, I think by next, yep. by next, this time next year, I think you're going to be very, very far. Thank you. <laughs> Definitely. Well, Erica, I don't want to take up too much of your time. Like I told you before, even though you were scared in the beginning, here we are two and a half hours later, <laughs> still talking. Yeah. We haven't, we haven't broke a sweat yet, right? <laughs> right? We did all right. I mean, you're laughing now and not like, you know, yeah. I didn't make no. you cry. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> fuck. No, we did not good. today. <laughs> no, we did good. We did good. Yeah, yeah. This did, was fun. Yeah. Did all right. 
Hold on. <laughs> well, <laughs> I look forward to talking to you again, and uh, hopefully we can meet sometime in the future too. Definitely RapsCon next year. Yeah. We are going. Yes. You'll you'll have to make that happen and introduce yourself because, you know, I probably did bump into you at some point. Given now that you told me you were at the Raps VIP party with the Hello Kitty, <laughs> yeah, skirt and all that stuff, I probably do remember you, and there might be a picture somewhere taken. But, <laughs> um, but Erica, I like to let everybody know where they can find you and follow you and watch your journey in the rap industry. Can you let everybody know where they can uh, get you on social media? I'm on Instagram at the rap kitty. Uh, you can also follow my car account at hello kitty scion XD. Nice. So you're on Instagram. That's your main, mm -hmm. your main platform. Yeah. For my portfolio work. Yeah. Well, go and follow Erica, the rap kitty on Instagram. Please follow, follow her, watch her journey. She's going to go places. And if you see a DM, make sure you DM back. <laughs> yes. yes, I will. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Well, I, I wish you well for the rest of 2018. And uh, for next year, I hope you accomplish all your goals you have for next year. Thank you. I appreciate it a lot. What's up, everybody? Hope you enjoyed this episode of the All Wrapped Up podcast. Hit that rank button and review. And to stay up to date with future podcasts, hit that subscribe button. Till next time, folks. That's a wrap.